What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi Coach. Welcome back to another video. I figured in this video, I'm actually gonna take a look back at one of my most controversial videos, Ben Hogan Golsing, Why It's Not Right For You. We got 77 dislikes, 54 likes, so obviously more people disliked it than they liked it. We had 71 comments and I think it was pretty interesting. So let's go dive into some of those comments and break them down for you. So let's start this video off with a thumbnail. I know the thumbnail was definitely uh, controversial, let's just say the least, and I know a lot of you guys who are Ben Hogan fans probably didn't like the thumbnail, and it's probably a big reason why you clicked on the video just to make a negative comment down below. And it kind of did its purpose if you think about it. On YouTube, one of the big things is click-through rate. So if you can get a high click-through rate, that means a lot of the people who are scrolling through their feeds will click through and watch your video, and that means you get more exposure. So honestly, the thumbnail did exactly what I thought it was gonna do. It was gonna create controversy and get people to click on the video, and it got us discovered. So yes, I apologize that that's the way you have to do it on YouTube. However, if you don't do it, and I would have just said some normal thumbnail, probably not a lot of you guys would have clicked on. So I apologize if it did offend you. However, it worked its purpose exactly the way I thought it was gonna work. So I wanna talk real quickly where I got all of my information about Ben Hogan. I would first off say that I'm not a Ben Hogan expert. I'm not one of those people who have studied him for years and years and years. So I will come out right away and say that that is true. I am not an expert. However, I do know a lot more than the average person about Ben Hogan because I have read the book An American Life by James Dodson and in that book they pretty much detail the whole journey that Ben Hogan had to take to get to kind of the playing career that we all know about now. I think the book was really well written and we got to learn about Ben Hogan's childhood past, how he had to see his father kill himself. That kind of built the characteristics that we saw later on in his career where he was such a hard worker. He had to really try to support his family by working at an early age. From there, being underneath the shadow of Byron Nelson for most of his career, struggling when he first started out on the tour, not being able to make cuts, hitting massive hooks and just struggling with his ball striking, talking to other really elite level players at the time, trying to pick their brains, find little tiny things about their golf swing that he could add to his golf swing and then ultimately coming up with a model swing that fit his motives or his goals perfectly and got rid of the left miss to where he could play with confidence. So am I an expert about Ben Hogan? I would argue absolutely not. However, it's undeniable. If you read the book, he struggled with the hook and he struggled with the hook for the longest time. And when he started to play better, it was when he found all those swing characteristics that allowed him to not miss the golf ball to the left. As well, he found a fancy new driver that fit him perfectly, which is maybe a story for another day. But the main point is he struggled with the hook. So what I was saying in this video, I personally think attains to people that I was trying to target in this video which were people who hit slices. So that out of the way, let's go take a look at some of the comments real quick. All right, so the first comment we're gonna take a look at was from Randy. I'm not gonna see your last name because I'm probably gonna mess it up, so I apologize, Randy. But he said, Ben Hogan didn't say to have a weak grip in the five lessons. You obviously didn't read it. He actually said on page 32 that in 1946, he moved his thumbs over to the left one half inch because of his tendency to hook. He said, let me make it clear, it's a slight adjustment for him and not a fundamental. His swing was so pure for him, you can never swing like him for watching videos of him. You must read the book, particularly the takeaway with the hands. So, Randy, I agree with you. Again, the video was not made for people, though, who had read that book. I was making the video for people who struggle with a slice, who probably have watched Ben Hogan swing because they heard he was such a ball, good ball striker, and then try to copy elements of his golf swing. Again, if I were making this video for people who read the book, the wordings and everything that I would have said would have been a lot different, right? And I would have specified at the beginning of the video, hey, I'm making this video for this particular per type of person, but I didn't make it for that particular type of person that you're referencing. I made it for people who hit a slice who most likely haven't read the book. So the next comment is gonna be from Benjamin, and I'm not gonna pronounce your last name, Benjamin, so I apologize. Lol, don't ever try to down talk a legend. Who's this guy a again? Who's this guy again? I think he's referencing to me, who's me? Okay, so let's go over the first part. So first off, I didn't talk down to a legend. I think this is probably one of the people who saw the thumbnail and probably got pissed off, which again, I apologize, like I said in the beginning of the video, that's how YouTube works. It's the only way to get you guys to click through. But second off, um, actually complimented Ben Hogan quite a lot in this video. And I honestly think Ben Hogan was way ahead of his time. He was one of the first people to talk about with wedges how he opens up his stance or driver he closes his stance, which if you know about deep playing theories through TrackMan, you would understand that he was far 
you know, far ahead of his time. He figured that stuff out before anyone else, which is really impressive. Also, his ability to create a golf swing that worked for him and got rid of a hook and to come from a place of where he came from all the way to how successful he was, obviously that's amazing and it's something that very, very, very small percentage of people actually are able to do. So I wouldn't say this video was meant to talk down to him, so I apologize if it came across that way, but I believe, Benjamin, if you watch the whole video, maybe your opinions would change uh, about this comment you made. All right, JMJ5150, are you Cameron Champ's boyfriend? He's in all your videos. Yes, actually, don't tell anyone. So we got Billy XRP Cowboy. Horrible advice for someone so educated you sure aren't thinking. If you were honest, you would say you just don't understand his swing because if you did, you would love his grip and you would understand that he doesn't have a slide. That would make him sick. He was against the slide. Sorry, I'm really keeping a lot in. Pivot in the manner he did and you'll see it looks like a slide. If it doesn't, it's because you don't know how he does it. Okay, so let's talk about a slide and my personal definition of a slide. So what I do is I swing the player up to the top. I draw a line from the left hip straight down to the ground. Now, if that player slides his hip forward and his upper body back, and then from there, the left part of the groin is ahead of that line that you drew at the top of the swing, that to me is a slide. If you swing up to the top and the whole body moves forward and you're seeing that the left part of the groin is ahead of that line, that to me is a slide. So whether you are sliding the hips forward and tilting the upper body back or sliding the whole body forward, I think it's a slide if it meets the checkpoint parameters that I just established. Now, if you do do that, what I just said, you're gonna find it's a little bit more difficult to square the face when you slide that far forward. You're probably gonna miss the golf ball off to the right. Unless you have a massive supination move or some type of flip to square the face, it's probably gonna be difficult to do. Now, this might be contrary to what other instructors say. I'm sure some instructors actually like to see that. And and they would call that like a good weight shift or a good pressure shift or a center of mass shift. But me personally, I think that if you do it that much that I just specified, that would be considered a slide. So it comes down to more so personal preference of the instructor and kind of who's saying what. But my personal opinion is uh, he was definitely sliding. So next comment, we have power faded. If it wasn't the right swing for the amateur, Hogan himself would have said that in the book, and it would have probably been the first thing he would say if it were true. Do you not understand the personality of a man like that? You think he wouldn't mention that? Lol, dot, dot, dot. Hogan's five lessons is anatomically and fundamentally more correct than the modern swing where players ruin their backs even though they have all the resources. A good swing like, Ho oh shit, this is long. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there. <laughs> let's, let's comment on this one. All right, power faded. So I apologize. I'm not going to comment your whole comment because it's it's pretty long, but I'll comment the first part. So what I think happened when you first initially watched the video is you read the thumbnail and the thumbnail said, I think something like Ben Hogan was wrong. So I think you were assuming that I think everything that Ben Hogan says in his book is wrong. And that's not actually what the thumbnail really meant. And the main point of the thumbnail, like I said earlier in this video, was to attract people like yourself who like Ben Hogan to watch the video. And most likely I knew it was going to be controversial. And as well, the next thing you said, if it wasn't the right swing for the amateur, Hogan himself would have said that. Well, I didn't specify just amateur golfers. I specified amateur golfers who struggled with the slice. So there are certain mechanics in Ben Hogan's golf swing that if you hit a slice and you try to do these mechanics, you're gonna hit a bigger slice, right? That's just face to path, that's common ball flight knowledge. So that's why I kind of brought it up in this video. So to answer your question, I think you're one of those people who probably just watched the thumbnail, maybe watched like a minute of the video or less, and then wrote your comment down below. So if you would watch the whole video one more time, I think you'd probably have a little bit different opinion of kind of what I was trying to say. And I apologize if there's more great information in your comments, um, I'm not gonna read it just because it's a little long. Uh, maybe just uh, next time format it a little easier so it's easier to read. Thank you. Okay, so there's definitely a lot more negative comments. However, let's get some positive comments in here, right? I'm dying to hear some positive. So we got the first positive one from Mr. Broken Towels. Thank you so much for commenting, Mr. Broken Towels. People that dislike this video or people that didn't listen very well, you were praising Ben Hogan's skull swing and warning slicers against certain moves that Hogan makes that would make their slices even worse. Thank you so much, Mr. Broken Towels. I can tell you watched the whole video. Typically, people who do watch the whole video, they're gonna come up with that assumption. Yes, I agree. Agree. The thumbnail was probably a little controversial. Again, the whole thing was because of that was CTR trying to get people to watch video. So I do apologize for that. But yeah, Mr. Broken Towels, I completely 100% agree with you. However, the issue is we had 77 people that did not agree with us. So we got to change those 77 people's minds. 
let's get into another positive comment. Next positive comment, and there's not a lot of them, guys, but I enjoy them, so thank you for making them. Juka, Juka, I'm not going to pronounce your last name. I apologize. I'm going to probably mess it up. Great and honest review. Hogan was an amazing player, but like you said, it was a perfect swing for him. Most normal amateurs with weak hands and short slice don't benefit much from a weak grip and that hold release. However, if you have time to make it work, that's also great for you. Juka, thank you so much for commenting. I can't agree more. The main point here is you got to make the swing work for you. So to maybe demonstrate that, let me talk about a recent lesson I had with this lady professional golfer and talk about how we actually use some of Ben Hogan swing characteristics to get her to hit the golf ball a lot better. So what this lady golfer was taught here in Japan was she should get a flexed wrist at the top because there's a pretty famous Japanese player that does this, Hinako Shibuno. But to flex the wrist at the top, get the face angle pointing up to the sky, so a lot more shut. And then as she came down, she was taught to drag the hands forward and get a lot of shaft lean, or in Japan, they call it handle first. Now the issue with that was, yes, with the pitching wedge, she was hitting the golf ball a lot further, right? Because she was turning her pitching wedge into about an eight iron. However, once she got to about, let's say a six iron, her six iron versus let's say an eight iron was going the same carry distance because she didn't have the speed to support that type of loft with the six iron, right? She was launching it way too low and it was actually going the same distance as her eight iron. So as a professional golfer who relies on hitting probably a lot of six irons for a lady golfer, she wasn't gonna be able to hold the greens with that type of shot as well. If you have gappings that close to each other, you're gonna really struggle with distance control out there on the course, which for a high level pro golfer, that's not what you wanna be struggling with. So what we had to do was I actually got her to feel slightly cupped or extended at the top of the swing, which then in turn got the face angle from pointing up to the sky to pointing a little bit more this way. From there, her pitching wedge would lose a little bit of distance, right? Because she's not turning that pitching wedge into an eight iron anymore. However, her six iron versus her eight iron was now going 20 yards further. So the gapping was getting into that 10 yard increment between clubs and she was able to have a lot more consistent carry control with her irons, which is what you want for a a professional golfer. So as you see, I think when it comes to the Ben Hogan concepts, it's more so developing mechanics around the desired goal that you want to have with your shots. That is really, to me, what Ben Hogan was all about. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably going to disagree with that comment, but personally, that is what I think about when I think about Ben Hogan. He took all these little interesting things from all these different pros and built it into his own golf swing to get rid of a shot that he didn't want to hit. So I think that's the true spirit of what Ben Hogan was all about and that's what I try to do in my lessons. Okay, the last positive comment right here, and I think there's more than this, so I apologize if you made a positive comment and I didn't go over it, but Mark Fall, we're going, John Jacobs once said that looking to Ben Hogan's swing as a solution for a slicer would be nothing short of catastrophic. So you're in good company, and as a golfer, Mr. Hogan is my idol. Like you said, haters gonna hate. I think that's a perfect comment to wrap this video up on. Haters are gonna hate. I truly believe in that. Again, I apologize for you guys out there who are Ben Hogan fans and you saw that thumbnail and probably got offended. I do apologize. Apologize, but again, that's the name of the game when it comes to YouTube. You need that CTR. Other than that, um, I think if you did watch the video all the way through, it would have been really valuable, especially for you guys who are hitting a slice. So if you guys haven't watched this video, I'll leave a link to that video somewhere right around here so you guys can go check it out. Other than that, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video.